Tice. Um, with that news, I want to bring in uh, also Bruce Klingner, former CIA Deputy Division Chief of the Koreas, and Lanhee Chen, a Hoover Fellow, who are joining Fred Flights as well. Um, as we look at that deal and knowing that there's this economic wooing for North Korea, um, Lanhee, how, how do you think these optics work for them? And, and clearly, there's a message here about what benefits they could get if they play by, you know, Western rules, at least when it comes to their nuclear program. There is absolutely a message here. There's a historical context. There's also a regional context as well. And I think, obviously, the president is trying to send a very clear message here, to your point, that if North Korea chooses a certain pathway, which they can make the choice to begin as part of this process, they too can be in a position of economic success, potential economic strength and growth, and it's all part of the message that the president's trying to send uh, to Chairman Kim. And as we look ahead to what's going to happen, because the president's got more meetings here, more official uh, events with Vietnamese officials before he moves ahead to the big meeting with uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un, um, we're looking at this, and, and there's an interesting article, Bruce, in the Wall Street Journal talking about him. Kim Jong-un comes in as a more confident, more seasoned leader this time around. He's had more time on the world stage. He's met with this president before. Much has been made of the relationship that they have. How do you think he enters this second round of talks? Well, he's been in power for six years, longer than a U.S. president's first term. Uh, he's had numerous summits, not only with President Trump, but also with the Chinese leader, four meetings and three meetings with the South Korean leader. So he went from diplomatic self-isolation to now, you know, having his coming out party uh, and really being a very energetic, uh, you know, summit attender. Well, and we've, we've touched on China, and given your expertise in that region and your time there, I'd like to bring you back around on that as well, because they obviously have different interests than we do there. And there's a lot been made about South Korea and how the current President Moon there, who, he's got different interests as well. I mean, he wants Chinese trade. He wants that to be working there. Um, so they're obviously going to have a different weight and different influence in the region than we do. Exactly. The, the relationship between China and North Korea is, is, I think, more troubled than many people think of such a large country, you know, they would think it would control North Korea. But actually, it, North Korea has played its uh, off the allies against, or the superpowers against each other. So China doesn't like what North Korea is doing, uh, but right now it's very happy that we're on a diplomatic path as opposed to some kind of crisis on their border. Okay, we're going to keep our North Korean and diplomatic uh, experts that we have with us here because we're going to take a really quick break. The president is now moving on to another live event in about four or five minutes. We want to take the break now so we can take you back live to Hanoi as that plays out. Stick around.